Hi everyone, welcome to the video on the excretory systems of the human body. Now, what we're going to talk about tonight, the process that we'll discuss is the process of excretion. And excretion is the body's way of eliminating what are called metabolic wastes from the body. Now, we don't have one central excretory system to do this. We actually have three body systems that carry out excretion for us. So we're constantly trying to get rid of wastes because they can be very poisonous to us if they get too high in concentration inside of our body. So the three systems that we're going to talk about include the respiratory system, the integumentary system, and then the urinary system. Now, as we know, in the respiratory system, the respiratory system is designed to draw oxygen into the body so it can go into the blood, get to the cells, go to the mitochondria, and be used for cell respiration to make ATP energy. But as we've learned, cell respiration is actually going to produce two waste products, carbon dioxide and water. So when we do produce them, we have to get them out. And the organ that we use is the lungs. So anytime we exhale or breathe out, we're getting rid of metabolic wastes. And this is what you can see down in the picture here. This young boy is ex exhaling in the cold air. And the cold air is making the water vapor produced by cell respiration condense into liquid water droplets, and that's why we see fog here, and then there's carbon dioxide mixed in as well. So that's how the respiratory gets rid of metabolic wastes. Second of all, we have the integumentary system. The integumentary system is a system that's made up of your nails, hair, and skin. And when we take a look at what the integumentary system does, it eliminates heat, water, salt, and small amounts of urea. And to get rid of these wastes, if you think about it, water, salts, that's going to be sweat. So when we sweat, we're actually getting rid of metabolic waste produced by our cells. To get rid of these wastes, we actually get rid of it through the skin. Even though sweating is designed to cool us off, we actually get a double function out of it by getting rid of metabolic wastes. And then lastly, we have the urinary system. And this is the system that produces or eliminates water, urea, and salts in urine. So this is the system that produces urine. I don't have a picture for that here. You can use your imagination for that one. So let's take a look at what the urinary system looks like because that's what we're going to mainly focus on tonight. Now here's the urinary system in your body. Your urinary system has a few structures to it. First we have the kidney. Then we have these long slender tubes called the ureters. And the ureters connect to a muscular bag called the urinary bladder, which is this right here. And then lastly, we have a tube that leads from the urinary bladder outside of the body called the urethra. As you can see here in the diagram, the kidneys are hooked up to a major artery called the aorta. And then the aorta is going to send blood through here through what's called the renal artery. And then the blood's going to go into the kidney. So anytime you hear the word renal, R-E-N-A-L, Okay, that actually means kidney. So if you hear of renal failure, that is kidney failure. So what's going to happen is that the renal artery is going to bring blood into the kidney, and then the kidney is going to filter it out. And the kidney is going to filter it out using these microscopic filters called nephrons. And your kidney is filled with tons of these nephrons, both of them, because your blood is constantly being filtered or being pumped into your kidneys. So you need a lot of filters cleaning out all that blood to get it out as much waste as possible. All right, and we'll talk about the nephrons in a little bit. But the nephrons are going to be the structures that produce urine. And then the urine is going to travel down the ureter. And then it's going to travel down into the urinary bladder where it's stored, as we said before. Now, since blood is constantly being filtered, it's a good idea to have a storage bag for this because if we didn't, urine would be leaking out of the body practically every minute of every day. So the urinary bladder is really helpful for us in that it stores it and then when it gets too full, it'll activate stress receptors in the muscle here that triggers your brain that tells you that you need to go to the bathroom or something bad's going to happen. That's how the urinary bladder works. So let's take a look at the nephrons to see how the urine is produced. This structure here is called a nephron. Remember, there are tons of these inside the kidney. There's some basic structures to it. You have the glomerulus, which is this ball of capillaries here. You have Bowman's capsule, which is the house that the ball of capillaries lives in or sits in. And then you have what's called the loop of Henle here, which is where filtration takes place. And then you have the collecting duct, which is where the urine is being collected to be sent out of the kidney. 
what happens in your nephron is this. The blood gets pumped into your kidney. It makes its way to your nephrons. And then the blood is actually going to move through the glomerulus at a pretty fast rate because it's being pumped out by your heart. So it's coming out with a lot of pressure. And as a result, there's going to be a lot of force in that blood. And what's going to happen is it's going to force out a lot of the nutrients and molecules that your blood is carrying. The only thing that's not going to be put into the Bowman's capsule are going to be the blood cells and also proteins because remember proteins are long chains of amino acids and they're too big to fit through the openings in the cells. The types of materials that actually get forced out into the Bowman's capsule and then into the rest of the nephron are located down here in the bottom right. We have our mineral salts which are the black dots, our amino acids which are the pink dots, our glucose molecules which are the green dots, water obviously it's blue, and then urea, even more obviously, is yellow. What's going to happen is you're going to have this filtrate, as it's called, or this solution of stuff, move through the nephron. And then it's going to enter the loop of Henle here. So as it goes through the loop of Henle, this is where filtration takes place. This is where we start picking and choosing things that we need and things that we don't. And normally what you see around the loop of Henle is a web of capillaries. Your blood has been cleaned out of everything that you need, so we have to take things back. So what will happen is you're going to have the reabsorption of glucose back into the blood because, as you guys know, you need glucose to make energy. So it has to get back into the blood so your blood can deliver to the cells to produce energy. Second of all, amino acids are going to get reabsorbed because your body needs the amino acids to produce proteins that it needs. And then lastly, we're going to use or reabsorb water. Urine is made up of water, so how come it doesn't take all the water back in? Well, the second job of the kidney, in addition to cleaning out the blood of wastes, is to balance the amount of water inside of the blood. So it's going to take back the water that it needs and leave the extra water that it doesn't. So this is why if you drink a lot of water, you urinate a lot because your kidneys filter out or leave that excess water that you've been putting into your body in the nephron to be expelled because we don't need all of it. Your body takes what it needs and gets rid of what it doesn't. What's going to happen is all these good molecules are going to start to be reabsorbed back into the blood to be delivered so they can be used for their chemical reactions and other things that, are, that they are needed for. That's what's going to happen in the loop of Henle. What will happen next is that the loop of Henle is going to continue to carry the rest of this solution with all of the nutrients needed and what we're going to have now is just the waste products that are left over. So if we take a look, I'm going to take away the capillary just so it doesn't uh, fog up the view here. If I take away the capillary, all you're really going to see for the most part is a concentrated solution of water, the blue dots, salts, the black dots, and then urea, the yellow dots. They're going to be a couple or you know a handful of glucose molecules and amino acid molecules that are going to make their way out because they didn't get reabsorbed. But the major components of this solution is going to be urea, water, and salts. And as they make their way down through the collecting duct, you're going to get this combination of urea, water, and salts, and that's when you've produced urine. Okay, so urine is then going to make its way out of the nephron and then out of the kidney. And as we said before, what's going to happen next is this. The urine, after it gets produced inside the kidney, will travel down the ureter and then be stored inside of the urinary bladder. And as the urinary bladder fills up, what's going to happen is, once it is filled and cannot hold any more, that urine is going to leave the body through the urethra and then preferably into a toilet someplace. That's how the urinary system works, and that's how it helps out in excretion, and that's how our body gets rid of metabolic wastes. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you.